Project Nexus. China has astonished the world with the completion of its longest suspension bridge, the Yangtzegang Yangtze River Bridge, a structure devoid of bridge piers capable of withstanding typhoons of magnitude 10. This fully suspension-supported bridge has left onlookers in awe, prompting questions about its practicality. How did China accomplish this remarkable feat? This video will delve into the details. China, renowned for its expertise in bridge construction, has been a pioneer in the field. While the West was still constructing bridge piers to support the weight of bridges, China's prowess was evident with its well-known peerless stone arch bridges. Foreign experts were astonished the first time they saw such bridges, struggling to comprehend how these peerless structures could support the entire bridge's weight. In the traditional views of European and American countries, it seemed essential for all major river and sea crossing bridges to have bridge piers. However, the Yangtzegang Yangtze River Bridge has shattered this convention. The Yangtzegang Yangtze River Bridge is the 10th river crossing bridge in Wuhan, Hubei Province. Stretching from Guobua Cross Line Bridge in Hanyang District to Baiton Interchange in Wuchang District, the bridge is primarily supported by two massive bridge towers with anchoring cables and interchanges on both sides. Statistics reveal that the main span of the entire bridge is 1,700 meters, with a total length of 4,134.377 meters and a width of 33 meters, making it China's longest river crossing bridge. Additionally, it is the first double-deck highway bridge over the Yangtze River, with the upper deck designed as a two-way six-lane urban expressway with a speed limit of 80 km per hour, and the lower deck designed as a two-way four-lane urban arterial road with a speed limit of 60 km per hour. In recent years, Wuhan, as the administrative center of Hubei, has experienced rapid economic development. To alleviate urban traffic pressure and address congestion issues, the decision was made to construct a river crossing bridge. Considering the expected population density along the Yangtze River banks in the future, the bridge adopted a two-deck design. The upper deck features a two-way six-lane roadway with a design speed of 80 km per hour, while the lower deck accommodates a two-way four-lane urban main road with a design speed of 60 km per hour. Non-motorized vehicle lanes and sidewalks are also provided on both sides. This design not only effectively addresses vehicle congestion but also enhances safety for pedestrians and non-motorized vehicles. The two ends of the bridge are marked by towers reaching a height of 255 meters. Observing the bridge from below, the towers extend impressively into the sky. However, the most commendable aspect of the bridge is its main span. Can you imagine a main span without peer support crossing the Yangtze River and successfully completed? Records show that China began planning the Yangtzegang Yangtze Channel Project, a crucial river crossing hub, over 20 years ago. Faced with two options at the time, constructing a tunnel or building a bridge, the decision to build a bridge was made as building a tunnel would not meet the transportation needs of the second ring road and might conflict with the subway line crossing the river. However, why did we abandon the traditional pier design and opt for a bridge that spans the river? Geotechnical surveyors explain that the decision not to place piers under the Yangtzegang Yangtze River Bridge is mainly due to a 3-kilometer-long riverbed between the Yangtzegang Bridge and the Yingwuzu Bridge. Building piers in the river would alter the water flow direction, affecting the navigation of ships on both sides and potentially compromising the effectiveness of flood control projects. Furthermore, there is a water flow control system beneath the Yangtzegang Yangtze River Bridge. Constructing piers would inevitably lead to changes in water flow, requiring a costly readjustment and reconstruction of the water flow control system. To avoid these issues, the decision to span the river became the most reasonable choice. For the bridge to successfully span the Yangtze River, the structure must be robust enough to address the force distribution challenge. The weight-bearing capacity of the Yangtzegang Yangtze River bridge primarily relies on two main suspension cables. Data shows that the length of these two main cables is 2,850 meters, 
with a pressure bearing capacity of up to 65,000 tons. To ensure the bearing capacity of the main cables meets the standard, engineering technicians used 39,494 special steel wires. These steel wires were woven into 91 individual strands, each comprising 271 wires, creating main cables with a total length of 2,850 meters and a pressure bearing capacity of 1,960 megapascals. This design is sufficient to withstand the immense pressure of 65,000 tons. The diameter of the main cables exceeds 1 meter, and their exterior is tightly wrapped in yellow rubber to effectively resist erosion from wind and rain. In terms of construction, the amount of concrete and steel used for the bridge surpasses many others. According to statistics, approximately 75,000 cubic meters of concrete were used for the bridge towers at both ends, and nearly 150,000 tons of steel were used for the main cables and the bridge structure. The Yangtzegang Yangtze River Bridge is laid out from northwest to southeast, mainly consisting of anchored beams, suspension cables, interchanges on both sides, and the two bridge towers. The bridge's vivid golden color makes it visually striking from a distance, earning it recognition and awards in the international bridge technology community. Prior to constructing this bridge, engineers designed a wind-resistant model with a ratio of 120 to 1. After two months of testing, construction officially began in December 2014. During the bridge's construction, to ensure the stability of the main tower foundation, construction personnel decided to design two main bridge piers using caisson foundations, a process filled with challenges. Caissons are typically suitable for geological conditions dominated by sand, while the Yangtzegang Yangtze River Bridge's main towers are situated on a thick and hard clay layer. According to design requirements, the depth of the caissons needed to exceed 300 meters underground to ensure the bridge's load-bearing capacity. This marked China's first attempt at caisson work under such challenging geological conditions, posing unprecedented challenges to caisson sinking construction. Notably, the caisson for the second tower, with dimensions of 77.2 meters in width, 40 meters in length, and a total height of 50 meters, equivalent to eight basketball courts in size, weighed a total of 6,200 tons when submerged. Such weight posed a risk of collision due to excessive draft during the sinking process. To prevent this, construction personnel employed the airbag method. Using Rubbermaid airbags, they inflated them to block water leakage in the pipelines. A tray was installed at the bottom of the caisson, and the interior was sealed by welding to fill the caisson with air. This method successfully stabilized the bridge piers on both sides at the riverbed. By increasing buoyancy and reducing draft depth, the caissons were safely sunk into place. The Yangtzegang Yangtze River Bridge officially began construction on December 3, 2014, and after over four years of hard work, it was completed on December 29, 2018, with official traffic opening in October 2019, the total cost was 8.5 billion Chinese yuan. Apart from breaking records with the bridge itself, the Yangtzegang Yangtze River Bridge once again demonstrates China's prowess as an infrastructure powerhouse. It is the 10th river crossing bridge in Wuhan and the second longest bridge span. The longest span is held by Japan's Akashi Kaikyo Bridge with a span length of 1,990 meters, but its construction took nearly a decade. In comparison, China completed the construction of the Yangtzegang Yangtze River Bridge in just five years, showcasing the world-famous Chinese speed. It is worth noting that the main cables of this bridge were manufactured in China for the first time. To build high-strength main cables, the first domestic ultra-strong steel wire production line was specially established in Qingdao. Additionally, the construction of this bridge involved the use of a massive 300,000 cubic meters of concrete and buried caissons equivalent to eight basketball courts in size. The golden color of the bridge is striking from a distance, and the bridge designer has received International Bridge Technology Awards, becoming a focus of attention in the industry. 
China's prowess in infrastructure has once again left countries around the world in awe. The construction of this bridge not only showcases China's infrastructure technology but also serves as a testament to the hard work and intelligence of Chinese engineers. The success of the Yangtzegang Yangtze River Bridge is attributed to the countless days and nights of hard work and relentless efforts by China's infrastructure personnel. Through their collective efforts, the domestically manufactured main cables and steel wires, intricately designed two-deck structure, and innovative construction technology have come together to create this world-class engineering marvel. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.